So, welcome to the school board's second budget workshop for the 2011-2012 budget season. Um, I think to, we have a list of topics to cover tonight, um, and I'll read them off and then turn it over to Ken to provide an overview of sort of where we stand. Um, tonight, our list includes community services, benefits, instructional support, staff and student support, transportation, custodial and facilities, and athletic department. Well, thank you, John. Um, as school board members know, but I'll just repeat it for the benefit of our uh, the public who may be watching, the school board is considering a uh, budget that would increase expenditures by 2.2%, uh, which equates to a 1.9% rate on taxes, which for a median price house in Cape Elizabeth uh, would equate to an $85 increase uh, in property taxes. So we think it's a um, conservative budget um, that reflects the economic climate that surrounds us, uh, yet we also think it's a budget that maintains what's a top-notch school system. Um, the school board tonight is going to be considering the seven different budget lines that John mentioned, and of those lines, community services <coughs> is asking for the same um, sort of funding they had last year, in other words, the budget that Janet has developed will have no impact on property taxes. The benefit line is up about 7.5%, and that's mainly due to health insurance costs, which we're estimating, we don't know right now, but we're estimating that uh, our costs will go up about 10%. Instructional support um, will answer any questions that you have. If you compare the apples to apples, um, that account is up around $47,000 because of an out-of-district tuition that we were not anticipating um, that we actually incurred this year. Staff and student support is uh, at the same amount of funding as last year. Transportation is up a little bit, but that's because of the fuel account. Uh, everyone's aware of what's going on with the price of oil. Custodial and facilities is, is up um, almost $100,000, and uh, Greg will review those accounts, but that's mostly due to the new boiler that we have and, of course, the increase in the price of fuel, which is driving a lot of us, and we can talk about that in depth tonight um, and tell you when we put this budget together, with, you know, we were thinking around $3. <coughs> and, uh, you know, we may want to increase that line before we bring it to the town council. Uh, and the other last account that the school board is going to consider tonight, Jeff will review with you, and that's the athletic account. That's just almost all those lines are in it, flat funding, except for we're recommending um, increased time for the trainer. So that's kind of like an overview of what we want to hear tonight. Any questions of me before we turn it over to Janet for Well, I was going to ask, will we, put, will we put Janet on the spot for a summary presentation? We've, we have already heard a, a presentation from each of the department heads. Um, is, that, is that, I don't know what, what, should we be putting department heads on the spot tonight for a summary mm -hmm. presentation or should we just go right into questions? Like, Whatever um, will help you develop clarity about this budget, I think. That's what we're after. Yeah, we want well, to make I, sure I, you're I, as clear I as possible. I think the members of the school board have seen that presentation, so, and I don't think we asked for that in advance, so I think we can just go right into questioning. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. Um, so on that note, are there any questions about the community services budget? Um, the expansion of the summer day camp to include divisions for grades 7 and 8. Can you expand on that just a little bit? I'd be glad to. Um, last year you may know that we um, 
removed the middle school day camp, um, believing that that was what the community, the students really were looking for. Um, and we moved everything into what we call TNT or trips and treks. Um, as a result of those not going as well as we had hoped, um, we're keeping those, but we're also bringing back the middle school day camp concept. We're changing it to called, <coughs> called Teen Scene. Um, and it's, it's going to have more um, structure than the previous middle school day camp, but less structure than the current day camp for grades one through five. Um, they will have access to all of the same equipment that the day camp has, so the archery, the pool, the track, the, the turf field, all of those things will still be accessible to them, the game room, um, but we will intermingle the two um, groups into various a activities at a time. So um, we're excited that it's, it will better meet the need um, and keeping with the trips and treks, so we'll still have all of that as well. I had a couple quick questions. Um, perhaps I didn't read this quite properly, but as a whole, community services cost the town about thirty-five dollars for for home for the medium home. Is that correct? Correct. I mean, some people under the mistaken impression that community services is a break-even proposition, but it isn't. Never was intended to be. Um, part of that is based on um, funding pieces from the state, um, but um, it's always been as close to break even as possible. And that 35 bucks is not increase, that's, that's actually the total amount each house pays. Correct. Okay. I, I noticed that the um, fitness center um, has, a, has the largest shortfall of about 14 grand. Um, has that continually been a, uh, a shortfall for us? It has for the last few years, which is um, part of the reason why, um, if you remember two, three years ago now, the town um, oversaw both the pool and the fitness center. Three years ago, they um, decided to go um, and, and um, go into private, to, to rent it out rather than to have it be operated by the town. Um, that fell through at the last minute. And so um, rather than close it down, community services felt very strongly that it was a, an asset to the community. And we were going to try our darndest to bring it to a, a point where we could sustain it. And we um, continue to work on that. I would agree with you. I think it is an asset to the community. Um, it's a, a generalized question. I, I'm, I'm just curious about the history of this. I'm surprised that the high school has virtually no weight training facility. They have a, uh, basically a closet. Has there ever been any thought or discussion in the past about taking the fitness center and making it part of the high school and still allowing adults to use it but pay a fee? In other words, allow kids, in, like right now our students have to pay five bucks every time they use it, isn't that correct? Or they can get a, a, um, a year or pass, right. But has there ever, ever been any consideration about making the fitness center actually part of the high school? It hasn't ever come up that I'm aware of. Um, we have tried to incorporate use of the fitness center more with athletic teams and we have allowed, we allowed them to come in and access the facility at no charge with their coach. Um, but that has not, early on in the fitness center, um, when it was developed, that was taken advantage of frequently, but in the last number of years it has not. So it, our intention is not to keep high school students out, we just want to make sure that they are properly supervised. I, I would agree with you. I'm, I'm just suggesting for the future that it, it may be worthwhile for a high school our size to actually have a fitness center. So people in gym classes, and I mean, physical education is a very important part of growing up. And we don't have, we have great gyms and great track and great pool, but we have, to be honest, to be honest kind of a joke of a weight room and no, no treadmills, no anything. And this might be something mm -hmm. to consider in the future about working out with us. Yep. Mm -hmm. That's all I have. Anyone else? I just have one. Is is your fuel budget um, is it is it locked in at the same time and rate as the rest of the school department fuel budget? And so it's right now targeted at three dollars. Is that correct? That's what we've budgeted is three dollars a gallon. 
It's not locked in, but that's what it's not locked in at this time. I Correct. understand that, but so if 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 we were to be concerned that the cost may be going up, we, we should think about this budget as well as the facilities budget in terms of fuel costs. Yes. Okay. When we just to follow up, and when we when we do lock in, we usually do include <coughs> community services, and I don't know if the rest of the town is in one contract, don't we? Correct. Okay. Okay. So, any other questions for Jen? Okay. Uh, so, the next item is benefits. There is not a tab that would be included in the salary. In the salary. First salary. one. Can um, the fluctuations in benefits, particularly when they are headed down, I assume have to do with changes in staffing as much as anything else? Is that, is that correct? Uh, I'll let Pauline answer that, but I think what we do is take our present staff and just project similar usage for the following year as opposed to trying to anticipate. You know, if we've got five people retiring, what that might do. So we just take our present staff and project carrying all of those folks forward. And right now we're anticipating a 10% increase, but there's, you know, hopefully we'll see less than that. So we might have a little bit of savings there. When does that before. number come in? Usually mid April. The last year we had it early was 1st of March. But I don't ex usually it's in mid April. I mean, just to give you an idea, if, if it was 5%, that would, uh, that's big money for us. That would be $80,000. So it's not it would be insignificant. 80000 right? 5%. Yeah. So it's, instead of what we're projecting at 10%, just to give you an illustration, if you came in at 5%, that means you have $80,000 so that you could reduce the budget or increase the interim superintendent's salary or something of that nature. <laughs> How much chance of that? <laughs> Unless. <laughs> Make a deal. Could I? Yes, go ahead. Um, have you checked with, um, actually there's no real good comparison to um, the teacher's self-insured trust because they have a monopoly. Um, do you, have, do you check it all, what the increases have been in the state at all, in terms of health insurance? How'd you come up with 10%? That's what they're requesting for, um, I'm not sure you probably know exactly how the process works, but I know that, I do know not this insurance, but another spin-off of Anthem is requesting 10%. It's under consideration by the state board. So, uh, I mean, for their guess is as good as I would project in here. Well, for whatever it's worth, I'll give you my guess is that I would not be surprised to see some. I think 10% is a very reasonable number to put in. They had very low increase the last couple of years because they wanted to compete. And they've been getting their, the monies. When we investigated, when we asked questions, the uh, town uh, insurance committee. Um, they were able, they used up their reserves, mm -hmm. and they were able to keep their increases low from sources of money we don't know where it came from. Um, the, the belief is those sources of funds aren't there anymore. So we should see a makeup year, which is, I would anticipate being quite large, and I would not be surprised to see somewhere close to 10%, regrettably. And that's why, um, uh, Hopefully some other issues will come to fruition that might give us some, some wiggle room in the future, but I think this year we're going to take it on the chin. So I do not think that's a conservative figure for the public. I think that's a very reasonable figure. Hopefully we'll know the number before you bring the budget to the council. And people, the public should be aware that um, um, we, they virtually have a monopoly. They, we, we, by our contract, basically have to buy from them. There is nobody that can compete with them. 
And so we can negotiate with them, but we don't have a lot of leverage. Okay. Um, I might be able to read about this, not in the budget meeting, and get the definition of this. But will you tell me about the tutors? How many tutors do we have? And do we plan out tutors throughout the year? And I wouldn't. I would have thought tutors were a contractor in person, so they wouldn't have been as attached. Um, but that doesn't seem to be the case here. Where is that? Um, there's a couple spots for tutors through salaries and benefits. One is um, 8800-1210 on page 3. Sorry, a couple places throughout. Well, this is salaries and benefits that didn't break out, did it? Did well, down below. Oh, down below. Okay, so that's um, a different tutors number. Tutors and substitutes are 8800 And it's a small number. Um, I just didn't expect us to pay benefits for tutors. When we hire a tutor, it is an employee. That person is an employee, and we have to pay them through payroll. And when we do that, we have to cover them for unemployment, for workers' comp, uh, for those types of taxes that we have to um, pay for, for those employees. They don't receive any health benefits or any other um, teacher benefits, but they, we do have to pay for unemployment and workers' comp okay. and Medicare. Okay. Well, that's okay. great. Um, and so how many tutors do we have throughout the... We don't have any that are on, um, that are hired on a regular basis, or we may have a few, very few that are hired on a regular basis, but uh, usually it's as needed, they're hired as needed. And that's... It's very short term, so it might be a student that, for example, is expelled or suspended, or might have a mental health issue going on, and so we to bring them back in, we might slowly do that with a tutor. Okay. But it's short-lived. Right now, I don't think we have, pretty sure we don't have any tutors at this point. Don't, don't we use tutors for kids with concussions and so forth? We sometimes have students out for an extended period of time, we provide tutorial services right so they don't fall too far behind. And when that okay. happens, they go through the IS department or 504? It, 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 it really depends. Sometimes uh, the concussions, if they're under a 504 plan, yes. Um, and then we work through Pauline to figure out which line it comes out of. Jeff has, a, all the schools have a line. Okay. And then I have, a, I have a line as well. And most of the kids that go into like a Spring Harbor type of thing, um, we do because we want them to be educated. So we do pay for that. Right. So when they're in a residential placement for a little bit, we will pay for that. Mm -hmm. Then they come back and then they go right back into there. Thank you. I just had a question on benefits um, and on the structure. I know there's uh, legislation, I don't know if it's been proposed, but on changing um, state employee benefits. If you retire at a certain age, there's a different share. Would that impact our school district whatsoever? Is that a different pool of benefits or are all our staff covered just by the Cape Elizabeth benefit plan? With, with retirement, it's no cost at all. I mean, under the governor's proposal, what will happen is that anyone in that retirement system, which is most of the educators, would um, be paying 2% more, so they would see a 2% decrease. We don't, as a town, contribute, the state contributes the other portion, so it's all employee or state. So The governor's cut does not include health benefits, it's, it's retirement benefits. Is, is don't, don't, that, we pay, don't we pay a portion of the retirement? Don't, isn't there a contribution made on, by the school district for, for retirement? Not for teachers' retirement. Not no. teachers retirement. Okay. It's all state. The state pays like 45% of the cost of a retiree's health benefits. Okay. And the retiree pays the rest. Thank you. I guess I have one more question. 
Um, for the co-curricular activities as well as the stipend positions, are every six months or year a stipend position for a team leader um, gets chosen and therefore added to their salary. So that's when we switch up, um, add to the benefit line. So with the, is that how it works? With the, with the position, stipend position comes the benefits as well. How does it work? The benefit portion of it? Are yes. You asking about the benefit portion of co curricular yes. stipend? I guess because I'm wondering if there's um, someone who's always a, a stipend for a department lead. Mm -hmm. um, most likely they're the same person each year for their, is it a contract, under contract? And so why are we breaking it up separately than their average, than their salary, basic salary? Right, you see that, you see a lot of accounts, a lot yes. of separate accounts. That is because of state requirement. The state requires us to break out any co-curricular stipend uh, from the regular teacher stipend. And also the benefit for that, just for that stipend, the benefit has to be broken out. Thank you. But to follow up on that, it doesn't, if you get a stipend, it doesn't increase your health benefit. That still no. stays the same. In terms of retirement, it's your last year's, I don't assume it would only, it has almost minuscule effect unless you're getting a stipend in your last year's, whether or not it's kind of sour or not, is that correct? That's really, I guess, what I was thinking. I did, I, yeah. but I didn't want to just jump in. <laughs> Thank you. Other questions about benefits? Okay, so let's move on then to instructional support. Questions about instructional support. I, I, this may go into revenues rather than instructional support, and I'd be glad to hold my questions today. I have a lot of questions about Medicaid reimbursement, and I don't have a lot of questions about the expenses. Um, and I, I said don't have a lot, just in case I might look through. I, I do have some. I don't get them. needled anymore. <laughs> um, but my question is more after with Medicaid and what we're doing with it and how we're going to get reversed in the future and the look back requirements. So if that's for revenue, then I will, I'll be glad to wait and find us. It's listed under other revenue, but you know, uh, the IS department is one that earns us that, gets us that money. So do you want to leave it for revenues? I think it would be more yeah. appropriate there. Okay. Yeah. We'll okay. Other questions, expense side questions on instructional support. I guess the only, only one I have is um, why did we change it for, well, why is it now contracted employees for OT and whatever? Why do we now use contracted employees rather than in house employees? We've always had contracts. Right. Um, and the contract, if the, the we have to, We've actually moved most of the contracts into employees. So our psychologists last year, the year before were actually contracts. So we've been, we put them as employees last year. Um, and we have OT contract, which is two days. Um, our PT is always contract, mostly the PTs around Cumberland County are, are contract. So those are pretty much contract. And our ABA specialist um, who comes in, four to five times a month is a contract as well. So it, it, it makes sense because everything, the IEP changes, so therefore we don't have consistent time with those. Um, no, it's just really based on all the IEPs. Take all the IEPs and you really look at um, the services for those related services, even the psych stuff, and that we really felt with a psychologist that we needed them as employees. They're already maxed out, as, as, as you know, as we talked about. And then the OT, I mean, we only need two days. So I don't want to make a position right now for that if we don't really need it. So. And so we look at these positions. We can, you can hire or um, like change the contract anytime during the year? No, nope, I do the contracts. Um, I do them every, once the, um, our local entitlement fund comes out, which is the 363000 about July, I start looking at contracts and, and pretty much the same year to year. I mean, I just go in, change the year, um, it's a standard contract, and it goes out to the to the contract. So, and that's standard operating 
procedure for our schools. I'm not doubting you. I just no, no, trying to understand. No, absolutely. I'd like to have more OTs around and PTs. Stop talking. You don't have to. <laughs> well, I'm always about freedom. I'm always standing for Yarmouth and Kick. Oh, well, then. <laughs> the rest of the two, I know. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. I know from other directors, they all do contracts, too. Because mm -hmm. it makes more sense to do it this way. Yep. And, and it saves money this yeah. way. And for example, right now, we're going to a plethora of referrals. So I, I, I have a. I need to contract with a, another psychologist to do some evals. So, and that goes through. I don't sign those contracts. The superintendent signs those. So there is a check and balance just to let you know. Yeah. Um, Dom, uh, one of the things about IS that's different than most of the others is your expenditures can fluctuate greatly in a year depending upon circumstances beyond your control. Yep. Yeah. And I think the public on you don't have a separate re uh, contingency fund or reserve for that. So, is that correct? That's correct. So if we have, like you mentioned, we had a new, lately a new referral, then we think it's going to cost us four, out of place. Uh, excuse me, out of district placement, which will cost us about forty-seven thousand. So, you know, one or two or three blips during the year could easily increase the cost. Uh, you know, fifty to a hundred thousand dollars. You know, significant dollars, in other words, in the in the IS budget, through no fault of of IS. Yep, the, you're, you're correct. I think I think what we're seeing is the range of kids that we're getting now, and they they it's, it's very difficult sometimes to program for them. And a couple of the kids that we even talk about these out of district placements, they're even having harder times than those out of district placements. So, just to let you guys know, they might even come back. Who knows? So those are the things that are, are really hard to, to determine. So, but to answer your question, yes, sometimes it's very difficult. Now, taking the other side of the coin, if for some reason uh, a kid moves out of district that happened to be, let's say, a reasonably heavy user of IS services, that does that or does that not necessarily mean a decrease in cost? Because I assume, I guess I'm answer, I'll answer the question for it, but I assume most of your employees are salaried employees. Yes. So if there's a decrease, it just means there's more available to help other people. Correct. What, what, what happens is there's always a void, <laughs> and we have to rearrange the furniture. Kind there's of always a void? You mean not enough people? There's always, the, well, we, we have people, and we try to really keep it um, working well. For example, we have, another, uh, we have a student moving in from up north who has a one-on-one, -on -one, and we have to take that IEP as it comes in. So we're rearranging. It takes us, a, we have a couple months to prepare for that student, so we're kind of rearranging the chairs to do that. So arranging staff. So the same thing it could, so for example, uh, if you're thinking at the high school and we, and we have a student moving out, um, so we'll move people <coughs> up and down the scale to try to, to cover that within a year. I hope that answers your question. Yes, it does. And I'm just trying to make a point for the public. You do the best you can to predict who's coming in or who might need, it's also possible, I assume, that certain students Need for IS services could, could fluctuate during the year. Yep, fluctuate. A lot more, a lot. Yep. <clears throat> so it's so I'm just when we get to terms in terms of thinking about contingencies and reserves, one of the things we have to think about is the possible fluctuations within your department that you have no control over. Yep. Okay. Thank you. Well, you raise, you raise a good point, David. I mean, when times get better, you might want to consider a special ed reserve account because one family moving into the district can blow a school budget right out of the water. Um, and if you have a reserve account for that, that you can be pretty skinny on your projections on expenditures, which Don is right now. All we're doing is projecting what is needed. The bigger districts would carry three or four extra out of district uh, tuitions just to be safe. Well, that leads me to one more question. You probably shouldn't have told me that, but you're right. I, I, um, in the last couple of years, it seems to me, at least a couple of years I've been on, we've always had instances where one or two kids come in. I mean, there's always, it's almost, it's a contingency, but it's not an unknown contingency. It's almost always happened. You get maybe one out of district placement, one new kid comes in. So to a certain extent, maybe we've got to think stronger about putting some money aside for that, because it's not that uncommon circumstance, am I right? You're, you're right. I think our numbers, I mean, the data shows it. I mean, we're, as the population goes down, again, I keep saying this, our number keeps staying the same. I even think it's going to jump up a little bit higher. And it's not because of over-identification, it's just kids moving in. Um, and I look at other budgets across Cumberland County, and uh, I think that we're definitely 
a moving district, you know. Okay. I, I hopefully you flogged my point there. Other questions? Oh, and I have one more. Okay. Last year we talked about um, how is our uh, total per student, how do we take care of our IS students um, on the page four. Mm -hmm. um, we're probably right in the middle. Are we running too tight of a budget? Are we running um, a very efficient budget? I think we're right where we should be. Right. I mean, Thank you. I, you know, I agree with David. Contingent. I mean, it depends on you guys. I would love to have a contingency because it is very stressful. But I have to go to Pauline and make help. You know, <laughs> really know. You know, but I think if you look at the, the the benchmark schools, we're right there with them. Scarborough is lower, but Scarborough has gone through massive, massive cuts. So. Well, I guess that's um, my point is that. You shouldn't be nervous to go to Ken, uh, the superintendent, and Pauline if it's an out of your control um, situation. But if it is a how are we serving kids in the district right now, are we covering what we, you know, are we giving the best service um, where we are in the middle of all other, of our area? Are we paying enough attention and giving the best quality care that we can? Yes. Yes. Thank you. Um, I just have one other yep. question. The, the, I understand that the two biggest increases, line item increases in your budget are the out-of-district tuition, which we've talked about, but also this, the contracted social work. Yes. So well, it, that, it wasn't it, clear to me what those. Well, what happened was, if we have to go back, you have to go back to the actual budget that we had, the RO funds. So as, these, our, as our student population increased, these high incident kids, we had to add things back in. Um, to add more services, things got more. And, and plus, to back it up a little bit, the our 363,000 local entitlement that really doesn't go up a lot; it stays flat. So, if you think about contracted and employees, th those are continually rising. So, the the benefits, for example, if you look in our local and uh, local entitlement application, the office staff salaries those are always going to go up. Contracts will go up a little bit because of the cost of increase. Um, and so those eat away at that that money. So when the RF funds have gone away, we've had we've had a shift. Are you telling me that we were spending forty eight thousand dollars on a contracted social worker this year, and now and we, now it's in the budget, and last year was paid for by ARA, but it's not a change in terms of correct consumption. Right. Okay. We had to add a day at the social work. Uh, we had to, we only had two days at the high school. And as Jeff will tell you, I moved to three, and that's not even enough at this point. I mean, I think we're covering everything, but I think we're working really nicely, seamlessly with all of our social workers to work for all the needs of the students. And Jeff's pyramid of intervention, the high school, for example, because that's what you're asking about, that's really helped. And we put uh, had our psychologist sit on that pyramid of intervention, and that really helps. Jeff has done a nice job pulling that stuff. So this is this budget includes an additional day versus last year. Correct. And it includes the cost of. Well, no, it's not. It's not an additional day. It's just it. It was covered in the ARA the additional day this year. Okay. So that's why that that increase has gone up, and plus there's a few other little pieces in there. It's part of those increases in shifting around, but yes, primarily what you said is correct. That there's no increase in services. It's just a. It's just a different, right. it's an increase in the budget line item because right. it was previously paid, paid for by federal RF funds. Correct. Okay. Excellent. I hope that is. Okay. Yeah. It gets so. We've had to move some things, and, and Pauline had to move because of main care. Again, everything's all so interconnected. We've had to move the people that we bill for main care out of the federal funds and get them into the regular budget because we can't double dip for the, those monies. So there's been a lot of rearranging, so it's hard to follow. You know what I mean? But, but in essence, that's what it is. Okay. Thank you. I just noticed a, um, and this follow-up, just so people know, the, um, we had the fiscal year 11, 12, and, um, and 10, 11, there seems to be a lot of, they were, I guess what I'm saying is there were zeros before, but it seemed, I assume we used a lot of IRA monies in 10, 11, and 11, uh, 9, 10, 10, 11, that we're now going to have to shift to uh, general revenue. Correct. Yeah, if you compare apples to apples, dumps account are up 47,000. Which is the cost of the other district. Yeah. 
that contact the service we had. In, it, You've uh, said that many times. And <laughs> is, is, <laughs> I apologize for being slow on the uptake. Well, I, I guess what I'm trying to figure out, right now, was it next year going to be using jobs fund money? Am I correct? Next year? We're going to use that. We're going to save it. Oh, that's my question. We're not going to be using it for IS? No. Okay. Thanks. Okay. Staff and student support. Well, it's time to think how much I call in. <coughs> It might be helpful if someone could um, uh, define uh, how these amounts differ from what we talk about in other areas as professional development, just so I know um, how this account, what, what is the support, you know, what, what are the funds used for. Right. It's broken out, as you can see, K-8, 9 through 12, so they're, they're very similar. It's just that we budget some of those K-8 and those for high school. but. Like when you see staff development, K-8, staff development, 9, 12, those are the funds we use for in-service activities. <coughs> At the beginning of the year, there's an opening breakfast or lunch, I forget which breakfast. Um, but there are other activities that go on in those in-service days, so that those funds support those activities. Of course, reimbursement, uh, you see that similar K-8 in high school, those are teachers who are taking courses uh, and we reimburse for the expenses that they incur. The strategic plan is probably um, not, a, not a good name for that, but that supports um, activities like uh, there's a district newspaper, um, things of that nature. Printing, I think that's self-explanatory. Um, central supply, all the money for the paper that's used in the district is budgeted in this account. So that $27,000 is for all of the paper, copy paper, that's used throughout the district. Um, student assessment and curriculum, that's uh, professional development. That's mostly summer curriculum work. And the NWEA, that's a external assessment that we use primarily K through 8. Are you using much at high school? Ninth grade. Ninth grade, okay. But it's just an assessment that's administered. It's sort of like a standardized test is the easiest way to explain it. But it provides a lot more timely information for teachers. So when we look at overall professional development for teachers, we should look at this as well as the line items in the high school and the other part of the budget. Exactly. Yep. Each of the building principles has a line item for staff development. So if you add that all up, it's a good commitment to professional development in the district. Thank you very much. Questions? I just have, a, I guess, a comment about um, the staff development. I would uh, love to see the staff development line, you know, kind of line item, because they must have it written who goes to what. And the only reason why I either say in behind when it's already happened in the budget or when it's going to happen, I'd love to know what our uh, school is focusing on for staff development. Um, if it's just a standard, you need to, if the teacher needs to get their own requirements, that's one thing. But if it's something that we're training uh, or having a thought on, I'd like to know who, what uh, programs we're going to so that the public can read about those programs and buy into, uh, so it's not all on the um, teachers, but it's also mm -hmm. available to the community. But I'm not sure if that's linked through the budget or linked through teaching learning. How would we get that, you know, what's the best way to get that information? Probably ask me. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. I'll ask you later. I'll ask you again. Okay. All right, so moving on to transportation. The transportation accounts are, you know, you've heard me say 
this before, but let's say it again. It's fuel and the new bus. We buy one new bus each year to keep the fleet current. So that new bus is going to cost us about five or six thousand dollars, if I remember correctly, more than um, we had budgeted last year. And of course, fuel's going up, and that accounts for everything else is in zero, or what we had last year, I should say. Technically, we don't buy the bus, we lease it, is that correct? Yes, it's a three-year okay. lease. And at the end of three years, do, is it our bus? Yes, it is. Okay. Any other questions? I, I have one just to, um, as our, you know, as the fuel costs go up and as uh, enrollment in, in kindergarten has declined, I know we do, uh, we have two different uh, programs, half day and morning for <coughs> kindergarten. Have we ever looked at what point, you know, the break even in terms of, you know, if you could add two teachers and not have to have the busing for, for two different kindergartens? I know not, not in this. Not tonight, but at some point, I'm sure we could identify at what point is it, you know, less expensive to have a, a one-day kindergarten. I, I don't know the numbers are, but I was just looking at, you know, if uh, you know, if a fourth of that is for an extra kindergarten versus having one full day. At, at some point, you probably get pretty close to to break even, and you might have other benefits. So. It would help offset some of the cost of all day K, but it wouldn't get, it wouldn't be a big slug. Okay. You know, probably save five to 10,000. And it would require, is it Tom, three new teachers for all day K? Yeah. What's the building? What's the building? <laughs> <laughs> well, we can build up. We build up, right? right. Yeah, but, that's, but anyways, that's there it. would be some savings like that, right, but they don't, right. they don't add up to a point where they say, okay, yeah, we're, we're there, we can do yeah. all they can. That's very creative thinking. I know Falmouth, we can talk about add to it, but Falmouth has just switched it this year to one full day and two half days, so they do a funny schedule so that the buses are less, but the kids come on a different rotation so they all get the amount of hours but I don't know how that's working I think this is pretty brand new for them you have to pay for that but there's new news to that so I'll okay. go into that any other questions on transportation okay on to uh, custodial and facilities Do you want to introduce this one? Sure. Um, like I said, it's up about a hundred thousand, but every all of the other line items are in pretty close to what we budgeted last year. The, the three big drivers in Greg's account, of course, heating oil, which we're anticipating or we're projecting, uh, figure three dollars. A gallon. Um, we couldn't lock in at that right now. Um, you know, if you wanted to lock in now, it'd be three thirty, three forty, something like that. So, but as I mentioned in an email I sent to you, uh, it's estimated that after July first, uh, we're going to see prices under three dollars. But you know, there's no science to that either. Um, but we do rely on people who supposedly are knowledgeable about. That industry. Insurance is up 7,000 and the new boiler that we put in is up 32,000. So those are the big drivers of um, the buildings and facilities this year. Questions? Um, because I got the same email, are we going to be talking tonight about the um, 
email received from you about, I'm, I'm trying to read it with my as well as the contacts, but new bleachers and some of those other things tonight? Or? Sure, this would be the time to do it. We budget about 176000 in capital improvements every year. We're not recommending that you go up or down in that account. Um, but of that 176000 we'd like to make room for the replacement of the bleachers at the high school. And if we can't do it all this year, uh, we'd like to save the portion that's in there and do them in year two. Uh, you eventually, as much as you don't want to hear it, have to replace the bleachers at the high school. If you try to do the repair, uh, you just throw them underway. Um, they're 40 years old, and if you think about some of the stuff you have in your own home, that's not a bad life expectancy. So uh, we do have to replace the bleachers. We think we've got a funding mechanism to get you there. Um, and we can either, you know, hopefully if, if the price of oil comes down, we can replace the bleachers uh, this year. And if not, uh, I really think that's, and Greg can expand on it. But we had the boiler, we had the hot water heater. This is number three on the list, unless we have another unexpected emergency. Can you see oh, the list sometime. Yeah, I, <laughs> I'd like to see the list. Do you have the list, Greg? Of what he's going to spend. Of what you want. Yeah, what you yeah. want to spend money on. That would be really helpful. Well, the, the, there's also a roof mentioned in here. Yeah. Yep. Um, we'll look at the list. Well, we're also curious. I think is what Mary did. We're, we're finally going to start. I hope doing a capital improvement three, five year plan, and it's always to do those things over time rather than loading it up in the last three years. So if we have to do some this year, then, you know, we ought to start this year. Yeah. We have a list coming around. Good. I do have a question about the bleachers, Greg. Sure. Are they safe? Uh, I, I guess that's who you ask. Oh, uh, see, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now we can't. Cur currently, the, the I mean, bleachers are in need of some major repairs. Right. Um, we have cracked welds, uh, 34 broken boards, uh, no locking mechanism that's functioning. I think one bank out of the, um, uh, let's see, we get to that. So there's 12 banks that we have in there works. So that means the village is. It's a bank. A bank. If you look in, you walk into our gymnasium, you will see two main banks, and each one of those has three individuals. So there's three pieces that could come out in each section. Does that make sense? Between the curtains. Yeah, I might need you to draw a picture. <laughs> <laughs> what no, he means is a section of bleachers is called a bank. Okay, section is. Okay. So we have groups in there, okay? As you walk into any of the doors <coughs> coming in, you'll notice there's three, then a curtain, then three more. Same thing on the other side, okay? Of those particular things, six on each side, we only have one that still actually locks into place which is, keeps it from moving when people are on it. So I don't know if you stepped on our bleachers and you notice all of a sudden they slide. Not at all. And I stepped on your bleachers before. Yeah, we don't maybe lock. Maybe locked them. Maybe That's I stepped part. on the locked ones. It, it, it's distinct possibly. They don't lock all the time. Sometimes they do, sometimes they don't. But the consistent locking is not there. Mm -hmm. um, to give you an idea, just to fix the locks and replace the broken boards doesn't get us in compliance whatsoever, but just to fix the, the the broken boards, the locks, and the broken welds that we have is $29,000. And that's from Hussey themselves who manufactured the bleachers. To make those bleachers compliant to current codes, it's over $120,000. I can replace them for $130,000. And you're taking 40-year-old things and you're polishing them up. That's the best way I can describe it. Uh, or you take a model A Ford and put a new starter on it. Um, so, there is, a, a, there is a need to replace these because of, of a whole lot of safety reasons. Um, you know, when you have broken welds, it kind of tells you you have an issue there. And that needs to be addressed. The immediate need is a minimum of $29,000. Just to make a repair. So it doesn't fix all our other problems that we have with bleachers. Well, the question I have is, I mean, not that I want to waste taxpayers' money, but I'd rather spend money to fix the bleachers now than face a lawsuit or, or have students injured or whatever, if it's really that serious an issue. It, it, is, it is an issue, a major concern of mine because of these issues. Um, when we have an inspector who comes in and looks at it and says, you have broken welds, you have 
34 cracked or broken boards that is part of the support mechanism, yes, there is a concern. And yes, it needs to be addressed. What we're talking about is do we make those repairs or do we put that money into repairing or do we replace them to something that can be fully compliant to all the code, applicable codes that are out there. We don't have ADA access. We don't have defined aisles. Um, the particular bleaches we have right now, you can pull a middle section out, there's no rails on it. So you can pull it all the way out and go to the top. There's nothing keeping you from falling onto the ground. So those are the kind of concerns that, that come through with, with the particular bleachers that we have. Well, so it sounds like a fairly serious problem. I'm looking at your 223. I don't see, and I may be missing it, I don't see a repair in that list. No, our recommendation is to replace the bleachers, not to repair them. We think repairing them is throwing money away. It's much better to replace them. You're eventually going to have to replace them. <coughs> I guess my question is, if, if our current budgeted capital improvements is 176, I mean, it's, it's my opinion that rather than hoping that we save money on oil, hoping that we save money on something else, we're going to just bite the bullet and buy, and buy it. And if we get some other savings out there, I'm sure we can find either use for it or help us with a contingency or help with carry forward to next year on taxes. Mm -hmm. This is an item, seems to me, that we should bite the bull on and raise our capital improvement budget to pay for it. Mm -hmm. And if we later find ways to, to make up for that, great. If not, we've, d we've done the safety issue. And if we do find extra money, because then fine. We roll it over to next year and raise taxes less next year. That, that would be my opinion. Well, it's certainly something the board can do. Uh, what we're trying to do is keep the budget uh, at the recommended level or lower. We just don't think it's a I, year I understand. Where you can start increasing things. Um, what, what I would suggest <coughs> is that we, we um, take that up when we do our reconcili reconciliation workshop uh, mm -hmm. in our last workshop when we're, when we're addressing any, any items we don't have ten tentative agreement on um, that this that we, we could revisit that. That's fine with me, because I, I, th I think that's an issue we should seriously debate. And uh, just, I, I mean, maybe Pauline or you, but adding 47000 to our total budget, it's going to be a minuscule percentage. Mm -hmm. uh, do you know what would be off the top of your head, Pauline? Uh, no, I don't. But it certainly be like two-tenths of one percent, and net taxes is going to be something like 0.3. I'm making these up. <laughs> it's, it's that of that magnitude is what I'm trying to say. I don't think it makes any difference, and I'll stop now. One question on the bleachers: Is this assuming um, you know 99% occupancy? I mean, I imagine if we look at attendance, and do we have to have the same amount of seating capacity as we did when? In this were? particular option, um, we currently have approximately 1,500 seating capacity. In order to meet the code requirements. ADA, proper aisles, rails, all that, we're going to go down to about 1,300 in seating capacity just to meet those requirements. I did look into cutting that back, say, to 1,200. The actual cost savings was so small that it really made no sense not to maximize what we could put in there. Um, you know, in a $130,000 job, if you're going to save $4,000 by taking a roll out, it's, a, it's not enough savings to justify the, the end result. But is our average attendance at these events 1,100 or is it 400? I'm just trying to get it's it. It's 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 it varies. It's it really it's depends on the. I've seen yeah. the bleachers packed in there with some of the basketball games. So, so we we have demand for uh, bleachers to support 1,200 seats. <clears throat> if I can, the uh, we've only had to use it once uh, in the time that I've been principal, fortunately. But um, the gym is also our backup. Uh, site for graduation um, that did happen a couple of years ago, and that is actually probably the one occasion where you that absolutely maximizes everything. And we would absolutely need at least 1,300 plus. Then we put um, I think about 500 seats on the gym, gymnasium floor itself. So our our basketball games, for example, certainly don't average or come close to averaging 12 or 1,300. But there are some games that get reasonably close to that and it seems to me given that unless we change our site of graduation which I would hate to do because it's because Fort Williams is so wonderful um, I think we need that gym back up and, and we couldn't do it uh, if, 
it would not be realistic um, if we went down significantly. Okay. Thank you very much. And I want to be clear, I'm not selling this on a safety issue, though that is a concern. I'm selling it to you on a uh, cost effectiveness. I think you're throwing money away on something you've got to eventually replace. I think we overplay some safety issues. It's not that it's not a safety issue, but it, that's not the concern I have. The concern I have is spending your money wisely, and you're going to have to replace those bleachers eventually, so why not do it? And I want to stress that we're doing it within the confines of the recommended budget. We're not asking for any additional expenditures. So I we're really not adding 47 to the, to the well, budget? Well, not right not, now. Not our recommendation to do that. <coughs> I, think you, I think you've got the, well, the money. <laughs> I think you've got the money to replace the, the budget. I really um, think the savings that I outlined with the new boiler are, are conservative. Uh, they were not estimated liberally. They, they're a conservative estimate. And um, something you'd consider replacing something, knocking something off the Kaplan Group plan. You got the list of the other things, and if you have any questions about how we're spending that. The rest of the 176, you know, the big item is that roof, that middle school roof is old too. That needs, part of the middle school roof needs replacement. And that will stop some of the leaks that you've seen over there. Not all of them, you've got a flat roof, but as Greg says, we'll never stop all the leaks, but it will take care of the major deficiencies. Painting middle school. In my regular, um, operational budget. I have painting, uh, regular painting uh, going on. Um, I carry uh, funds for us to do painting in-house and some contracted, so that does vary depending on uh, where we're doing, but we do try target areas regularly. Uh, to give an example, uh, last school vacation we painted all the bathrooms uh, in, in the high school. The, the baseline bathrooms, the student bathrooms were all painted. So those are the kind of things we keep up regularly. So. And even outside? We are going to be doing some outside work this summer. Um, I think you're going to see some work uh, above the uh, gymnasium area at um, Pond Cove Middle School. Actually, the middle school gymnasium area. We'll be doing some works and painting around that. David? Um, I, in my overall impression may be incorrect, but I get the impression that we're we're fixing things that have to be fixed as opposed to looking forward and maybe phasing in, uh, I mean, we call it capital improvement, but really fixing something that really needs to be fixed. A capital, fixing a roof is not necessarily a capital improvement, it's a capital expenditure because you already have a bad roof. I mean, is there, any, is there anything that we, that, and, and I keep hearing about maybe a, a capital improvement plan over time, but you seem to have built into this uh, must-haves. Is there anything in here that would be prudent for us to start doing now so that in the long run it costs us less money? Well, I think that's it's a loaded question because you can always say we need to do this and we need to do that. This I is I that within the long run will save us money. <laughs> I guess you look at that in multiple ways. I, my opinion is we're doing what we need to get done in, the, in, in, in what we have to work with, okay? If you want to throw the pie out there and say, hey, I'm going to give you all the money you could ever no. want, we could get a lot of things done, of course. That's not what I'm asking. Realistically. Well, let me rephrase the question. Sure. We're, it seems to me we're fixing things that absolutely have to be fixed. We have no choice. You don't have cost-benefit analysis or whatever. But a lot of times you have funds that you know that you have to repair something years two, three, four. You don't have to do it right now. But you build a, a, a sinking fund, whatever you want to call it, to prepare for that. I don't see that here. Well, well I think eventually, let me, let me help out David. Okay. Uh, I think eventually we'll get there. Um, that's what that capital improvement plan that we're working on. Um, so I think when times get better, you can increase this amount to a significant kind of change. So you're getting at that right now. Well, can it's I hard to do that. Can I ask you a direct question? Yeah. When we, do you have any of them going to get this capital improvement plan? Probably April or May. Okay, so if we're patching what we need to for or getting through next year, we can then consider that capital improvement plan in, uh, I call it year two, mm -hmm. if we want to. 
Okay. Yeah, I don't think, if you look at the long range financial condition of the district, I don't see you really making major additions to this account until you retire the middle school debt. Then you've got a significant chunk of change, and it's within striking distance. I think it's three years. Yeah. But the fact of the matter is, in three years, you can start doing the kinds of things you're saying. You can be preventative. But until that point in time, in this economic climate, to go to the public and ask them to start funding reserve accounts, um, I don't think that's wise. You know, when the checking accounts are overdrawn, you don't put money into the savings account. Well, I think that's a debate for a later time we'll all have. But Mary, you can keep shaking ahead of me, and I'll debate it with somebody else. <laughs> all right. Yeah. When we get the revenues, we'll have that. I'll look forward yeah. to that debate. Well, the revenues is how much you ask and how much they approve. So. But we'll leave it. I'll leave it. Any other questions for Greg? <laughs> I don't know. Well, that, I believe this is a good segue into athletics. <laughs> <laughs> Some athletics. <laughs> 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 yeah, exactly, Jeff. Is <laughs> Sorry, Jeff is concerned with the people on the on the floor, floor. <laughs> not <laughs> sitting on the bleachers. Uh, so, questions for Jeff? No questions on the athletic budget. In case somebody, I don't know, put a note. That his budget is something that our, our superintendent said earlier, but in case someone's turned in later, it's actually this, a flat budget except for we're finally paying for something I think we should have, which is a train, oh, I don't know, it's full-time trainer, it's a trainer. So I, I, I think that's, again, very much consistent with fiscal prudency, and uh, quite frankly, we're able to get there because of, uh, in a lot, large part, because of our booster clubs and the fees we charge and other things. That, that's a different issue. For a different if day. I'm not mistaken, we're, we're, we're actually budgeting for a trainer we've been paying for already. Yes. So the, the trainer is new to the budget, but not new to the expenditure yes. side. That's right. Yeah, we've been over that line. Over. We've been over expending on that line. So we've taken out of some fund somewhere. Oh, that, that's a good point to know. Thank you. Yeah, that, but that line item for the past few years has been about fourteen thousand dollars and the additional nine thousand would put us to about where we have been spending the past two or three years right. and it also aligns us with what some of our neighboring communities are spending as well it's between anywhere between thirty and twenty thousand dollars and i was impressed that that trainer treats you told us fifteen hundred injuries a year fifteen hundred yeah, a year and, um, you know, that's 270 students of our students each season. Um, that doesn't include when opposing teams are visiting us. And, Do, so. Don't we have the responsibility as a home team to provide the trainers, to provide the medical assistance? Um, it's not necessarily a responsibility, but it's uh, something that a lot of our schools in Southern Maine have okay. gone to. Questions? No? Well, one question. Do concussions go under health services now and not um, any concussion testing? You know, that follow-up work is health services and not athletics? Not necessarily, actually. I think that's a, another good point to that athletic trainer, the relationship between the school nurse. Um, I think a lot has to do with a lot of this concussion information that's come out in a lot of our education, a lot of our proactive work we've done. That relationship between the school nurse now and, uh, and the trainer has just improved immensely and they're really working together, um, whether it be providing the baseline or um, doing the follow-up with Dr. Hines and um, allowing students to get back onto the athletic fields. So it's not necessarily, necessarily just the nurse, it's, it's uh, cooperative. So that uh, money's just like we're... Um been already spending the money on the trainer. Are we spending? Are we? We have enough money in the these line items to cover the concussion work. That's um, that would <coughs> that would include what we're where we are with the total hours and, and expenses. And are parents asking more for it since we've had the train this? Um, 
the speaker came a few years ago, two years ago now, one year ago, to educate people about concussions? Is it? I think it's a number of things, you know, just through um, media and just the recent information that's come out with um, the severity of the concussion and um, I think that's had a piece as well, but just the education is. So we're taking care of it. Ken, okay, we've got, we're all over it. We've got enough money everywhere to cover. Um, I think so. Yeah. Middle school as well. Yeah. Other questions on the athletic budget? So um, if we, we have a little time, I might ask that we circle back to health services. Mm -hmm. Because uh, that was an area where we had an open question, which you, and thank you, you provided us an answer for. Uh, so we did. I had left that as no tentative agreement yet on the health services budget, and we could get an answer to the question on the equipment line, uh, which is to purchase replacement batteries, for the AED machines, and a wheelchair for each school. The batteries are the, at the end of their life expectancy, and the wheelchairs available at each school are, are in bad shape. That's what that equipment line was. Do, do, does anyone have questions about the health budget? Thank you for yeah, so we'll, we'll, information. We'll mark tentative agreement on that. For the narrative as well. Appreciate it. I know that trick. Quiz is at 8 30. Let's see who read it. So, <laughs> Mary, does that, uh, that mean we are prepared to move into our business? Yes. I think we can move into a business meeting and um, do we want to take a break? So, I mean, does anybody need to leave this year for budget? I mean, it should be fairly quick. Um, so, um, we have a special business agenda of two items. Does everyone have their, um, their agenda? Um, all right. Um, tonight, what we'll be doing is, is we will be. Um, Approving the asbestos yeah. removal. We were going to the workshop. Oh, you're right. Should we do that? First? Yeah, let's do that first. I'm sorry. Sorry to No, that's right. It's. Um, do you want to? Do you want to introduce that since you're finance chair? Sure. So, we have a. We have a. Um, we'd like to reschedule the next budget workshop due to a conflict involved in the superintendent search. Um, and so we're hoping, we have a tentative, uh, a proposal for a, a workshop either on this Thursday evening or on Friday, is that correct? Thursday during the day or Thursday during the day or Thursday during the evening or Monday during the day. So. Okay, so how, how do we want to Try to get agreement. Well, um, can we just discuss it. Sure. I would prefer Monday because just the amount of work I have to do in preparation for that. I, I do need some extra time given other responsibilities. This is the last one where we try to reconcile contingency funds and all the other. No, issues this is this is the next workshop in which we would take up the, the next three items, which are salaries. Um, Three-year plan, and I guess the three-year plan is what I think would take the most time. And I'm just personally, I've, I've been doing some work on it, and I would like, I, I personally would. It's replacing it. next Tuesday's workshop, not right. next Thursday's workshop. So. Uh, and how you confused me? It's replacing next Thursday's workshop. That's the day that we need to focus on the superintendent search, the 24th. So we're moving it up. So we're moving it up. Oh, so, so we will have a workshop on next Tuesday. That's right. Mm -hmm. okay. That would be the last one. That would be the last okay. one. Okay. So it is replacing Tuesday's workshop. That's right. And then we'll have Thursday's workshop on Tuesday. Mm -hmm. yeah.
So the seventeenth <laughs> would. Count. I lost that one. I'm sorry. I can't do Monday night, so. So we have a, the current schedule is we have a, a workshop scheduled for next Tuesday. Yep. The fifteenth. And Thursday. Yep. Okay. And the proposal is that we we have our next workshop uh, before next Tuesday and the final workshop on next Tuesday. Well, my question would be then, what is it we're going to consider on Monday? What is it we're going to consider on That's Tuesday? Our option dates. On, on, in our next workshop, we, we will be considering the next three line items, which are staffing, the three-year plan, and any other unfinished line, line items. So that's and on the following one, it's about it's the, uh, the board adaptation of the budget. Adoption or adaptation? I think it's adoption. Adoption. Okay. Just, just curious to me if it was something I hadn't heard of before. Um, well, my, my preference would be just given my own personal time schedule and commitment to work and other places. I'm becoming more comfortable in working with Pauline and some other people about three years. Possibly. But by the way, we're going to be able to. Monday doesn't give us a lot of time until Tuesday. I know. It doesn't give us a lot of time between meetings. That's my concern about Monday. So, uh, I guess. Well, are we going to see it? My understanding was the superintendent was going to propose a three year plan, or am I wrong? The superintendent has a three year plan, and it will go out tomorrow morning. So, you can have it tomorrow, and we can meet Thursday night, Thursday afternoon, Friday. It sounds like we keep that superintendent search focused. Okay. All right. I guess I'd like to propose Friday during the day to give us a little more time before our last. That's fine. Did you say you can't make Monday, Mary? Because that's important. I can't make Monday night. I okay. Mm -hmm. I, I would prefer the latest possible time we could do it so we can analyze the three year plan and what, what you're proposing. Okay. So how, how about, about Friday? Three, 3 p.m. on Friday. Uh, I can't do Friday. But you're leaving town, aren't you? Yeah. Um, any, you can't do any time Friday during the day? So that leaves us with Thursday evening? All day Monday that you're gone or just Monday night? Just Monday evening. I could Could we do Monday it during Monday during the day? Were you concerned about the tight time frame between Monday Yeah, we could try to do it 9 a.m. on Monday. Yeah. Okay. And do we all need to be here on Monday? You can't be here 9 a.m. Um, I, I would just... We could do it 1 p.m. 1 p.m. Monday afternoon. I don't know what the 11 o'clock. Anyone can do that. Co conflicts yeah. like. Yeah. I know how you We're so booked. I mean, we're. I mean. Well, oh, you. I can try to get out of it. I don't. I don't need to come. Okay. Mm -hmm. I'm not yeah. <laughs> Principles go. We will need. We will need. It is the salary portion of. Oh, that's true. Yeah. That's true. Uh, so, 1 p.m. on Monday? Kate, does that make you available? It does. Um, like I said, the John Morales. Are you available, Mike? Like Would you like to? Can you do 1 p.m. Monday? Ah, uh, yes. I, I can do 1 p.m. Monday. Okay. Yeah. What about the, do we, yeah. the salaries? What about the DLT? I, have a, I can do 1 p.m. Monday. I have a faculty meeting at 2.40. Need me, Troy could cover that for me, but I actually can, yeah, I, I have to move by like 2.15, 2, 2.30. Can you do 12.30? Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. We're not going to be necessarily get everybody, but 12.30 Monday? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. 12.30 on Monday. Here? Mm -hmm. Unless you're here. here differently. <coughs> Unless you're here differently. Okay. okay. Um, and <coughs> Excuse me, Tuesday is still on? Tuesday is still on, and that will be the last workshop. And, and Thursday, I cut now. Okay, you yep. got it. I'm changing. All right. Well, that's they, so we are still having on Thursday. During the day, probably. Oh, during the day. Four. Yeah, it's going to. I can't say. Okay, now I know. Thursday, the twenty-fourth. During the day. No. That's a search event, right? That's well, not a budget can, event. There's no, there's no budget can, event on Thursday. Correct. We can mention that it's a search event. That's not violating the confidentiality. Right. It'll just confirm it. It's right. recorded during that time. That's fascinating TV. <laughs> I'm, watching I'm just confirming TV. that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, Let's see TV. <laughs> Scheduling meetings. So, it's always like this. <laughs> um, it, I do need yeah. to 
speak with both of you about your availability then on Thursday, because mm -hmm. I, I want you here. Um, if, if you can. I'm easy. I'm sorry. We know that about you, Jack. Okay, so would, I think the scheduling yeah, portion of this meeting is, is done. Done. Okay. Thank Are you, you ready to? I am. Okay. Um, okay. So now we will move into the special business agenda, um, and um, the meeting part of our um, our evening. Um, we will be um, approving um, the asbestos abatement and also um, the contract for the boiler this evening. Um, do I have a motion for um, the abatement plan, please? Yes, I move that we approve the, um, I move that we, uh, we're, we're, I move that we authorize the superintendent to ex execute the contract with RJ Enterprises of Bath, Maine with a bid of $9,450 for asbestos abatement in the Cape Elizabeth High School boiler room. Second. Second. Um, okay, any discussion? Real quickly, I mean, there was a dramatic range of bids. Mm -hmm. One was 35000 This is obviously the low bid, but sometimes when you get the low bid, I mean, what, why the difference in the amounts? And are you comfortable that the low bid is actually going to do the job safely as well as properly? Yes, I am. Uh, they're required to meet um, EPA standards, and that has to be all documented. Uh, chain of custody it has to be provided to us. And RJ Enterprises is, is, is uh, actually owned by a gentleman who's been doing this for over 30 years. Um, and I did qualify that bid. Uh, if you notice, the number two bid is only $500 difference. <coughs> Some contractors look at these type of projects differently. And so that's why you see some ranges in there. Uh, asbestos abatement is, is it more of an unusual type of contracting than, say, a, 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 a bid spec where we say, this is exactly what you're going to do. So um, I feel quite comfortable with them. They're going to do a great job. It's an enclosed environment. All record keeping is going to be 100% accurate. If you have, and you've worked with them before? I have. The owner is a gentleman by the name of Dick Iverson, and I've known him for 20 years. And in his bid, he provided you enough detail that you're satisfied with safety? Correct. Correct, yes. Okay, thank you. Any other comments, questions? All those in favor? Our second item has to do um, with approving the contract um, for the um, boiler replacement project. So um, can I have a motion, please, on that? Yes, I move that we authorize the superintendent to execute a contract with Comfort Systems USA Air Temp of South Portland with a bid of $332,107 for the Cape Elizabeth High School Boiler Replacement Project. Okay, do I have a second? Discussion? Is this the one that the town is generously doing? Um, have they already given us that money? Have they already put it? No. So would we want to condition the motion upon receipt of that money? I mean, would we improve this without that? that that's a completely different ballgame. I think that's I think good for it. <laughs> so, but I have not been following. Has well, the town council approved yes. this? So, okay. Yeah. No. I'm, I'm a lawyer, but I don't see contingencies in there. So we, even though they haven't sent us the check, they're committed to giving us the check. Right. Yes. That's good enough for me. And we're very grateful for that. Very grateful. That's I have one nice. question. There. Yes. What, what's al alternate number three, which we're, it looks like we're not getting? Uh, alternate number three is to actually increase the boiler capacities over the recommended amounts from airmen. Uh, there was some discussion in one of the committees that looked at this project uh, of oversizing the boilers. Um, so we added that in there um, in case uh, we, we decided, but it is not a necessary alternate for this particular project. This is the capacity issue that we went over and over. Correct. Okay. Mm -hmm. Thank you. You're welcome. Any other questions, discussion? 
Um, one small one. I, I'm looking at these different bids. We came up with just, just help me with the math. Remember, it was 332. It's these, it's these three numbers added together. So we're going up to alternative two. Okay. Yes. Thank you, John. I think that's what you were asking, but I wasn't sure. Um, well, I'd, I'd like to thank you for all the work on this that you've done. Sure. I know it's been a lot, and we appreciate all of your efforts. Happy to do it. So all those in favor? <laughs> I'd also like to thank you. It's, I've had more than enough, even for me, I've had more than enough detail to be able to Thank you. Something good, like that. Excellent job. <laughs> thank you. Um, all right, motion to adjourn. So moved. Second. All those in favor? Mm -hmm. um, it's a board and I get to speak with